Howdy everybody, I am here today to show you the new Nightcore RSW2D pressure switch. This just came out and is compatible with the P12 GTS, MH12 GTS, and MH25 GTS and allows you to weapon mount those flashlights comfortably and access them remotely. I think you guys are really going to like this pressure switch if you have those flashlights because what it does is it gives you both constant and momentary access to your light as well as direct access to strobe and just lets you adjust the brightness output all from this little tail cap. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. talk a little bit about how to install your pressure switch. Now here I have a P12 GTS and what you need to do first is remove your tail cap. If you have an MH12 or an MH25 GTS, make sure you don't lose your tail cap because that's going to have the charging port for you. Next, go ahead and take your pressure switch and simply screw it on where the tail cap went. It's really that simple and easy. And now you are all ready to go. So the way that this pressure switch works, it's pretty simple. You can press and hold this top portion right here, which will give you strobe, or you can press it once to turn your light on. Press it again to turn it off. If you just need a momentary bit of illumination, there's this bottom portion of the paddle, which you can squeeze or release. Squeeze and release. It's that easy. To change the brightness level while your light is on, first go ahead and turn it on. And then what you want to do is from here, this little button on the tail cap, you can go ahead and press and hold it and your light will cycle through all of the different brightnesses. And what's really great is this pressure switch will memorize. So right now I have it on low mode. And if I turn it off and then back on again, that's where it's going to come on. Now if I press and hold strobe, it will strobe at the full brightness. So let's talk about some tips for using your flashlight while weapon mounted. The chances are that if you ever need to use these lights in a real life situation, you'll either be hunting or in a self-defense scenario, in which case you want to have practiced using your flashlight in these low light scenarios. Now we were lucky enough that Shady Oaks allowed us to turn the lights off on their indoor firing range, but if you can't find a situation like that, look for the most real life scenario type possible to practice using your light and shooting with it on. The other thing to remember is that these flashlights, these 1800 lumen flashlights, have a very focused beam. So if you're dealing with uh, maybe 50 to 100 yards, you're still going to have a lot of glare on that target from the bright spotlight. So just uh, keep that in mind as a thing to pay attention to when you're shooting and they get more comfortable with. Another really important tip that I have for you while you're shooting in the dark is to remember that during the daytime, the smoke from your weapon doesn't really cause too much visual disturbance, but once you get into really low light or no light situations, as you'll see on our video, there's a lot of smoke, and so you're not able to take as many shots in a row. You actually have to wait a second for it to clear to be able to get a good visual on your next shot. Probably one of the trickiest things about weapon mounting your flashlight is going to be your cable management. For us, we just used a very low-tech solution, which was a rubber band to hold the paddle in place where we wanted it. But if you're looking for a more permanent setup for your weapon, you can always get hook and loop patches or zip ties or come up with another creative way to get your paddle exactly where you need it. You want to make sure that it's easy for you to reach your paddle from your shooting position, but also so that you're not blocking it. And that's going to be different for everybody, but a little bit of trial and error and you'll find a setup that works great for you. Finally, the other thing to remember is that your weapon mount is most likely going to be made of metal, your gun is made of metal, and metal of course heats up. So if your hand is going to be resting on your mount, be careful if you've taken a lot of shots, it will heat up pretty quick. And also if you plan to be removing and installing your mount within a short, uh, short amount of time, you may find it still as hot. So just be careful and don't burn yourself.